Okay, I I didn't. I'm waiting for some stimulus. <laughs> yes, I would love to have a cash for Calvin Klein pants <laughs> or a cash for paying my water bill. <laughs> I where, where's that incentive program? I know they've got programs for people whose houses are are foreclosing or people who buy new houses this mm-hmm. year. Again, not buying a new house, so my tax refund in the form of a new home buyer credit not coming to me. Why is it that we can't, as citizens, recognize that, you know what, in the end, yes, it feels good to, to find money in your pocket after the laundry, but we get that's that's our money. That was not deposited there by the, the laundry fairy. By the laundry fairy, exactly. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, I have a $20 bill in my pocket. Where on earth could that have come from? Uh, maybe your hard work and your unconsciousness? <laughs> yes. what, a, what a reward, a reward for found money. Uh-huh. Uh, it's not found money, it's just discovered money that you misplaced and we're likely going to be $20 short on your gas bill. So why, and I love that they didn't spend that $20 like it's extra money. Like, oh, I'm gonna go out and get a pedicure. Uh Still $20 short on their their gas Gas payment, but they found money. Mm -hmm. And that's how this Cash for Clunkers program was set up. That people acted like it was found money. That, oh yeah, I'm getting an incentive to buy a new car. No, you're getting your tax refund back in a different way. Mm -hmm. So I don't get it. I don't get where people find the logic of creating a financial incentive with their own money, letting the government handle their finances when we could just step up and tell our elected officials, I don't want to pay my taxes and have you give it back to me in the form of incentives or in the form of supporting banks or in the form of buying car companies. I want my money back and I want to spend it on I don't know, organic produce. Well, I guess we'd have to ask ourselves the question, do the people want that much power? Well, exactly. I get that people are afraid of, what's that quote? Uh, People are not afraid that they are, that they'll fail, Mm -hmm. but that they are powerful beyond measure. Yeah. It, it, It really is that I think that the government is under the assumption that we are too stupid to handle our own money. So it's better that they take a third of it and redistribute it for us towards schools or charities or whatever they want because we won't do that ourselves. Like if left to our own devices, we would let the education system fail, we would let the roads become potholed, we, like we could not, as an organization of people, make that decision ourselves. I, I, I don't get why we are so committed to giving away our power, giving away our, our freedom, so to speak, to decide how we want to spend our money, how we want to spend our time. A third of our year is spent paying the government. A third of my income from January to April goes directly to the government. I I start earning my own money after April. So May 1st, I actually start putting money in my pocket. Hmm. What could I do with that third, the rest of that money? I could be more involved in the charities that I care about. Definitely. I could be more involved in my community. I could contribute to the stupid high school kids that are always coming by my house asking to sell me candy. I'm vegan, but I would buy their candy and then I would just go and sell it for a hearty markup. (laughs) It's probably delicious, I'm assuming. But why, why do we not take a stand as as, as, as citizens to reclaim our power and become accountable for our own money? for our own resources, for our own lives. Is is it too much to ask that people wake up and step up and want to be their own decision makers? But it seems that the laws of the country are set up to take our power temporarily and do what's best for us. Like we couldn't figure it out ourselves. As As if we as a society wouldn't come up naturally with the idea that we shouldn't kill each other. What was that Bill Maher movie, Religious, where like, like it's like we wouldn't come up with the the concept of not stealing each other's stuff or killing each other on our own without an organization telling us that. Mm-hmm. I know for me, there are plenty of people I would love to see not here, <laughs> but I'm I I. Good thing you had that policeman parked out front. <laughs> yes, yes, saved us all. I just don't see why we are so insistent on giving our power away. What, what, what is your theory on this? Why do we want, and throughout history, why do we want someone else to make the decisions for us? 
you know, I I think it just goes back to what we've already said. People just don't want to feel that burden. They they would rather give it to someone else and say, here, you handle it, so then I can bitch about it later. Because I, it just seems easier that way. And, you know, my dad did it, and his dad did it, and that's kind of just how we trained ourselves. It's true. We, we pass down victimness uh-huh. from generation to generation. And ultimately, the only thing that will break that cycle is the citizens, the people, humanity, stepping up and claiming accountability and saying, I don't need you, government, corporation, whatever it is, being accountable for me. Because it is true. We want someone to make a decision so that then when it doesn't work, we can blame them. We can just say, hey, I didn't, hey, my life's in the crap hole because that person made that decision because President Bush was president or because Clinton was president or because Obama's president now. We always want someone to blame because it's easier than being accountable. And yet, I always equate it like this. I tell people all the time. Living a life where you avoid accountability is like being a water skier behind a boat. Where the boat drags you around the lake and sure you can have fun while the boat is dragging you but you're gonna go wherever the boat takes you and if the boat decides to run you through that shoal with the trees you're going through it too or you let go Mm -hmm. and i don't want to be the water skier anymore i want to drive my own boat we'll see even the letting go would take some committed action yeah but most people people would just hold on and just go face first through the trees and break some ribs yes Yes, that would be. I, I, I know people who've done that. Yes, yes, I know people who've done that. So I guess the point is, it's time for us to stop being water skiers. It's time for us to be the boat. Drive our lives where we want to go. Because maybe we want to go over to the other side of the lake. Maybe we want to just go speeding straight down the center. I certainly don't want to drive my boat into the economic downturn thickets and have my face ripped up by low hanging branches i don't want that as say yeah as an example okay so ultimately i get that there's far too many people who recognize that they are water skiers but for lack of committed action like you said Mm -hmm. for lack of doing something different just sit back and talk about how their lives don't work, how the government doesn't work, how society doesn't work, and they don't take action. Ultimately, it's exactly what we say here on the show. Talk is cheap. Mm -hmm. If you are unwilling to take committed action and cause something different in your life, to reclaim your own accountability and create value with your own resources and insist that you be the steward of your resources, How can you ever expect anything to be different? We deserve to be accountable. We deserve the government to let us be accountable. So as for me and this show, where we recognize talk is cheap, I am committed to take action and cause something different. So that's our show for the day. Melissa, you're awesome. Love everything about you. you. I love you here. So we will uh, see everyone next week. So, uh, ciao, and, uh, wait, what does Seacrest say? Seacrest out. Wait, I'm not Seacrest. I'm not writing Seacrest. No. And that's a stupid sign-off. I want to shoot him. (laughs) What does that even mean? I don't know. How about we just end with Herbert the Pervert? It's beautiful. You you do it very well. (laughs) Good job, Jason. (laughs) Yes. Mm. Let's go out and make us some lemonade. See if that muscle on paper has some good news. Mm, come on, Jesse. No one make your peeps and boots. Yes, all right. Well, we'll let the people go. We'll catch you all next week. Jason Bye. Beckett, out. Talk is Cheap is a 16 Stone Media production. This show is hosted by Jason Beckett and co-host Melissa Barlow. All rights reserved, copyright 2009. That was lame as hell. (laughs) Yeah, well, I have my moments of lame, right? No, that was fun. No. That was good. The mountain in the ocean. Oh, no.